All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the SoccerBot um, Hardware Workshop number one. My name is Ben. And um, uh, I'm Nick. We are uh, both on uh, final year of uh, computer engineering major at our school. So if you have any question about classes uh, regarding this major, uh, just let us know. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So today's agenda. Um, we'll first start out by talking about the batteries we provided, as well as its charger. We'll be talking about breadboards, how to use them, what they are, how they work, um, and a quick Arduino intro. We're not doing any coding today. We're just going to be talking about what they are and uh, sort of like what the pins are, what they do, things like that. Uh, we'll also be going over your RGB LEDs. Um, your soccer bots are equipped with one so that you can have like team colors or have little animations. It's up to you guys what you want to do. And we'll have a quick uh, RGB LED demo. Um, and we all will also go over uh, the motor driver that we're going to use for our RC car, as well as uh, a little demo that uh, demonstrates how they work uh, in the basic term. And yeah. Yep. So as mentioned earlier, uh, we'll start off by talking about the battery that you guys have, all have. This battery is a nickel metal hydride battery. It's just the kind of chemistry it's using inside. Advantages over using this over something like a lithium battery <clears throat> is that it's safe um, and it's also rechargeable. It's a, this is a good move uh, from last year where we used AA batteries. Those are single use, so not so great for the environment. So we thought we'd throw in a rechargeable one this time around. Um, and yeah, they're, they only contain mild toxins, so not too bad. Uh, disadvantages, it has a limited service life as opposed to lithium. And it's also got a limited discharge current, but it's okay because these are small robots, not Teslas, so we don't need lithium batteries for, for the, this project. So a little bit about charging your battery. Uh, in these little brown boxes that we provided is your charger. So you can guys take it out right now and uh, unbox it. And in the box, you'll find the adapter itself the wall wart, and you'll also find this uh, pigtail connector with a bunch of these batteries, battery connectors on them. We're only using the large white connector, this one right there. So to connect them, uh, first get your charger and take the barrel plug and plug it into the barrel input, just like, like that. Then take your battery and grab the large white connector and line them up color to color. And yeah. these connectors kind of suck. So if they don't go in, wiggle around the wires a little bit until the two match up and then it should just click into place and make sure there's no gap uh, between the two connectors so that you can get the connection. Just like that. So once you have them connected, there's a convenient little outlet on the tables. You can just pop them open by pressing them and go ahead and plug in your battery so that you juice them up for the demo at the end. So these chargers uh, have a little LED on them, as you can probably see. Red means charging and blue means that it's done. I've seen blinking blue. I think that means it's just disconnected or something, or it could be red. But those are the two colors or modes that you should be most concerned with. This charger can do uh, nickel metal hydride batteries as well as nickel cadmium batteries. Uh, up to 10 cells uh, have a maximum of 12 volts. So you can use this for other kinds of batteries. Uh, since there are a variety of connector types on these. However, please only charge one battery at a time as it's only meant to charge one battery. Moving on to breadboards, I'm sure you've heard about these. Um, they're a awesome little way to prototype circuits without having to solder them permanently. So it's a, it's a lot easier than just cutting up a perf board and soldering them together. And fun fact, circuit boards were uh, circuits were actually built on little breadboards as shown in the photo back then. Uh, that's where it got their name from. And they come in a variety of sizes and types. And one rule of thumb that you should always remember is to never plug two things into one socket as it will permanently bend the, the, uh, the pins open so it won't accept anything 
smaller than what you just plugged in. So one thing at a time. So here's a, a little bit about how they're connected. So the, let me use the open for this. So you see here, we have the grid of dots here and some letters and numbering. And on the sides with the blue and red, um, we also have these as well. So the way these are connected is that they're connected uh, horizontally. So this row of pins at the top are all connected together. However, the row at the bottom is completely isolated from the row on top and the row on the bottom. And this continues all the way down. On the left side, it's the same thing. However, uh, this row and this row are isolated by this bridge here. You'll see why that's important in a moment. Another thing is the power rails on the sides. Instead of being connected horizontally, these are connected vertically. And you can see in the photo I have highlighted in yellow, um, what I mentioned earlier about the rows being connected. And the power rails, you can see that they're connected vertically. So these allow you to connect devices uh, and give them power um, easily by having a common bus to distribute all the voltages accordingly. And you have uh, two buses, one here and one here. These two are isolated. It's usually a good idea to bridge between these two if you're using the same voltage on both sides. In this project, though, you'll be using two different voltages, so you can ignore that. Another thing that these breadboards can do is be, uh, be stacked. These little notches up here allow you to connect multiple, chain multiple breadboards together. This is the where you would slot them in. And the lettering also is helpful to figure out where to plug in things, make it a little bit more standard. But we won't, we won't be using those, we just, we'll just be showing you how to plug it in. Um, but that's the breadboard. So, as I mentioned earlier about powering your circuits, um, it's important to connect your power rails correctly. So on the left here we see the positive end connected to the red rail uh, like this. So grab your your red positive end and connect it. Did we use a right or left side? The right, the right side. Uh, connect it on the right side of your breadboard. Uh, right side with the letterings, I guess, facing or reading the right way. So grab the connector and plug it in vertically and grab the negative end, the black end, and plug it in to the blue rail. And as a uh, reminder, please connect them as so, uh, shown. If you connect them the other way with red on top and blue uh, black on the bottom, it will short out, probably melt. Uh, it'll probably destroy your battery, so make sure that this is connected correctly. I'm going to use this up for a little bit. So red on the left, black on the right. And also make sure that your battery, uh, your switch is switched off. So it's important um, for me to mention that this is the 12 volt rail for coming from the battery. And this is the, it will be used for the 5 volt rail. And these two are completely different voltages, so it's important to keep them isolated. But for our project, we'll be keeping everything on the right, 12 volts, everything on the left, 5 volts. And so 12 volts on the right, connect it here with notches up, just like that. All good. Cool. Moving on to the Arduino. Okay. Um, 
Next, in our workshop, we're going to talk about Arduino, which is uh, arguably the most important uh, part of our projects because it's basically the brains or the controllers of our RC card because it's taking the input from the RC transmitter uh, and uh, process it and then turn it into instructions for the motors uh, of the card for it to move in a different way. And then Arduino is basically a open source programmable circuit board with a microcontroller chip on top of it. And uh, it's a microcontroller, so it's basically a small computer uh, that can do very simple tasks. And these are different than microprocessors, uh, where the microprocessors are more uh, complicated and run up uh, much higher frequencies. And microprocessor using run with a full scale operating system and run can run multiple tasks at the same time. Whereas microcontrollers, uh, they usually simpler and uh, they usually run on a very focused task and run at a much lower frequency. And this is perfect for simple application because microcontroller usually uh, a lot more inexpensive and power efficient. Um, and for our specific Arduino board, its internal clock run at around 8 to 16 megahertz, uh, which is equivalent to around 16 cy million cycles per second. And this seems a lot to you, but it's very little uh, compared to more than microprocessors, which run in the gigahertz range. And um, there are a lot of different type of Arduino ports on the Mac market right now. Uh, the most popular one being the Arduino Uno, which some of you might already see. Uh, but for our specific project, we're gonna go uh, go ahead and use the, our Arduino Nano board, uh, which is this board right here. Um, oh yes. Um, it's have the same chip on it. With I think instead of sixteen uh, digital input output pins, we have only fourteen digital input and output pins. Uh, six analog pins and some um, other pin for uh, zero data communications. Uh, but for our specific projects, we're just going to uh, mostly focus on the digital pins uh, and some of the power pins that we're going to use on, on this project. And um, uh, the reason we are using it is because it's a lot more small, smaller and compact, um, which is perfect uh, used for our RC car because we want something small to fit on our uh, very small uh, circuit uh, breadboard. Um, and in order to program Arduino, you need to uh, uh, you need an integrated development environment called the Arduino IDE. And these are very simple to use and simple to write code on. And there's are a ton of uh, built-in library that other people already made, which make hardware programming a lot more accessible because for pretty much any electronic device you found out there, there's already a built-in function for Arduino that to work with that specific device. So it's very easy to use. And the language itself is uh, very similar to C or C++. Uh, and I've, I feel like it's even easier than that. And when you write your code, the code that you want to write, uh, you can just upload it onto the Arduino board through a, a micro, U, um, sorry, mini USB cable to your computer. Like that. Okay, and um, yeah, going into the next slide, I'm going to quickly go over all the input and output pins that we have on our Arduino. So the first uh, pin is you see on the left side of the Arduino, we see the yellow pins. Those are the analog input pins. Uh, where the function of it is basically you will be able to read the voltage feeding into those pins and convert them to the to integer number ranging from 0 to 1023. And these are uh, possible due to something called the analog to digital converter. And you will learn uh, about uh, them later in your college courses, uh, which I'm not going into the, too much detail about it. And um, it, for on the software side, in order to read the analog pin, you will use a function called the analog read function on the Arduino. And uh, it's basically uh, reading the voltage from these pins and spit out a corresponding integer number on in your software. And the next pin on the left side, I think you have like 14 
yeah, I think you have 12, 12 pins, actually digital pins. And these are work on uh, logic. So it's just basically reading low or high or logic zero or one. And um, logic zero corresponding to the physical signal of zero volt and voltage high or correspond to a logical uh, signal of five volt. And of course the physical world is not perfect. So um, you can, there's a range for you to accept uh, the signal input is low. So from zero to 0 0.7 volt, uh, the pins, these pins will recognize it low. And if you supply to these pins anything higher than three volt, then it will accept it a high. And similar to the analog pins, you will have um, a function on the software side to read those pins and it's called a digital read. So it read the voltage level supplied to those pins and then convert to either high or low depends on um, how much voltage you input in there. And uh, as you can see on a, some of those um, digital pins, you have a PWM function next to it. And these are PWM output pins or stand for the pull with modulations. Uh, these allow you to output pulses signal that that have different length in their on and off duration and this is perfect application when you want to uh, control the uh, how the how fast uh, our car go because we can have something at 75 percent uh, duty cycle that means uh, you allow to your motor to run at 75 percent of the speed most of the time and for the PWM we're go gonna go them over them during the, the next uh, hardware workshop. Um, and also there's on this pin, you will see the gray pins. These are the zero data communication pins. And these are used when you want to communicate uh, with other devices or, or other microcontrollers uh, to get input, output, or just uh, communication in general. And um, these, some of the uh, popular the zero data communication protocol is the uh, ISOC, SPI, and UART protocol. And for our uh, specific projects, we're not going to use them because uh, we're just simply communicating through the digital and analog pin. And on the bottom left side, you see a very um, last pin, you see the VM pins. And we're going to use this pin to power the Arduino itself. And you see it's, it's accept the voltage level around 7 to 12 volt. So we're going to supply um, the Arduino with the battery that we're going to use later on in our projects from the power rail that Ben mentioned before. And the Arduino can also output um, two different voltage levels through the red pins. So uh, it can output uh, either 5 volt or 3.3 volt. And um, for these, uh, we're going to use a 5 volt output pin to supply to the power rail on the left of the breadboard. Uh, that's been mentioned before and um, for 5 volt it can output a maximum current of 800 milliamp and for 3.3 volt it can output a maximum current of around 100 milliamp and as you can see this current is not too big so it doesn't it's not enough for the motors that we're going to use because they need to draw a lot more current and that's the reason because uh, why we're going to use the motor driver because the motor driver can draw a lot more current than the Arduino and they're going to draw directly from the power supply and supply it to the motors. So um, that's why we're going to use them to, as a way to supply the current to the motors instead of the Arduino. Um, and next, uh, we're going to go for uh, over RGP LEDs, which we're going to use uh, as a way to indicate the speed of the motors. Uh, at different levels and RGP LEDs is very simple. It's basically three different color LED uh, that are uh, put together in one single package and it has three basic color red, green and blue and it's allowed to display up to seven colors depends on the combination of, um, of color you have between red, green and blue. And the color display on the LED depends on the, the current, current that you're feeding into uh, either of the RG or B pins. And uh, as you can see, um, Ben is displaying right here. The structure of RGB LED, they have four different legs or pins. 
and the longest legs is the anode or cathode uh, pin depends on the type RGB LED it is but um, if you want for example to um, to feed to for the LG, RGB LED to display red all you need to do is have the current flow through the red pins of that uh, RGB LED and let's say if you want um, your RGB LED to display cyan then all you need to do is to have current flowing through the blue and the green pin of the RGB LED. And how you feeding current into these pins depends on the type of current, uh, I'm sorry, the type of LED that uh, they are. So there's two types of RGB LED. One type is anode and the other type is cathode. And for anode uh, RGB LED, the current will flow from the anode pin onto the RGP or the color pins as you see on the uh, on the right picture there and uh, and that's why you need to when power these you need to uh, connect them to a higher voltage source to the anode pin and for the color pin or RGP pins you connect them to a low voltage source which is most of the time is ground and uh, on the other hand for the cathode LED uh, you want the current to flow from the RGB pins onto the cathode pin. So the current, um, so that means you need to supply uh, the ground or low voltage source to the cathode pins and the high voltage source, you see uh, 5 volts in this case, to the RGB pin so that the current flows from um, the RGB pin into the cathode. So um, very similar, it's just a different uh, in a way that the current flow into these pins okay and for our specific uh project we're going to use a uh, cathode leds because it's more uh, common sense uh you see you supply one end of led to the power supply or the uh to the rgb pins and the other end you sub uh connect it to ground which is a uh, uh, lower voltage level so in this case but for our specific projects we have we want to change the color rgb so we don't um, want to connect the RGB pins to a static voltage source with the 5 volt. We want to uh, connect them to the digital pins so that we can change the logical level of these pins. So that um, if we want a certain color, we can change uh, the voltage supply to these pins so that uh, end up control the current flowing to the pins and give it different color. And um, for our LED, it's our diffuse, which is you have a scratchy surface and you don't have uh, as much brightness, but it's okay because uh, we just want to see the color is displaying. Um, and in order to turn on uh, each of these LED color, uh, for the red pin, you need to supply it at least a uh, two volt, uh, two volt uh, uh, voltage. And then for the green and blue pin, you want to connect it to three volt voltages. And the max current that allowed to go through LEDs is 20 milliamp. If you supply it, uh, it too high of the current, it will burn the LED or it will shorten the lifespan of that LED. So that's why we're gonna use uh, resistors to limit the current of this LED. Uh, and because we're using a five volt um, power supply, we will uh, use a 220 ohm uh, ohm resistor uh, it's 0.22k ohm, so it's the same thing. And according to uh, if you build a circuit, you're gonna connect the power supply to the uh, 220 ohm resistor, and then you connect that to um, maybe I could draw on the board. Oh, yes. You can use a Yeah. So let's say you have a 5 volt um, power supply. And you have, um, let's say you want to power the red pins of the LED, then all you need to do uh, is connect it to the uh, resistor to limit the current of the LED. And then you connect this to the cathode pin, which is uh, ground in this case. So this is the common cathode pin. And then this is 220 ohm uh, resistor. And if this is a red pin, would take in um, two volt, right? So uh, basic voltage uh, divided circuit, if you have two volt here, then uh, across this, you will get a three volt 
uh, voltage different across the resistor. And based on this, you can basically calculating the current that you that flowing through the red pin of LED. So uh, the current uh, I of the red pin will just equal to three volt divided by two twenty ohm resistor, and this will give you, um, I believe, thirteen around thirteen milliamp of um, current. So uh, depends on what application you use or how bright you want it to be. Uh, you can calculating. Um, the current you want to have and then calculate the corresponding resistance that you want to use for your specific circuit and uh again the the higher the current the brighter the color will be uh but if you too high it's gonna burn your your led basically okay um and then it's only uh one red pin of the led you can have it uh the rgb led have two red pin pins so you will have a blue here and connect to the same ground and then you also have a green LED here. So each of the LED you will need a different resistor for it. And um, in this case we're just using the same um the same uh three different resistor. But yeah that's the basic of RQP LED in this case. Um can we change that to yeah sure. Yes. So um yes it, so, uh, because you use two twenty ohm resistors, that will allow us around nine to thirteen milliamp current flowing to the pins of that LED. Okay, and then next we're gonna go to a demo that Ben gonna have for this RGB LED. All right, it's <clears throat> time to finally power um, our first circuit. Uh, this photo is a little outdated, so I was just just using uh, what I show on camera. So instead of the digital pins that Nick mentioned, we'll be connecting them directly to the 5 volt output pin, of course with a resistor in between so we don't burn out the LEDs. And we'll see how different combinations of voltage inputs will change the color of the LED. And we'll also be able to practice some basic wiring on the breadboard. So to get started, uh, make sure that your power cable is connected as such with right on the, red on the left, black on the right. The next thing that we want to do is to get our Arduino and slot it in on the bottom. I uh, know that some of your... Oh, does anyone need scissors, by the way, to open up the... Okay. So on some of your boards, um, the motor driver has already been placed on it. Actually, two of them. <clears throat> You'll actually only need one, but we provided two just in case one of them was dead. Uh, so go ahead and remove the motor driver, both of them, from the breadboard. It's a little tricky. Um, I would suggest grabbing it using your index and thumb very firmly on the side and just try your best to pull it straight up. These pins are kind of weak, so they tend to bend easily. But just try to grab it and pull it up slowly, straight up, without bending any pins. And just put them off on the side. All right. The next thing to do is to grab your Arduino. And with the USB plug facing yourself, or the bottom of the breadboard. Um, place it uh, to, at the bottom closest to you, making sure that all the pins are firmly seated. <clears throat> and I suggest pressing down on top of the little uh, die right here and maybe grabbing a nail and pushing here as well. To push it all the way down, it's a little hard. And so <clears throat> Uh, push them all the way down until you can't see any of the pins so that it's flush against the breadboard. Making sure that this top pin uh, is connected to the top row so that there are no extra holes so that you're pushed all the way in. Yeah, it's recording. All right, is everyone good? Awesome. So the first thing that we want to do is get power to Arduino. 
And to do that, we want to bring the 12 volts from our battery to the V in pin on our Arduino. As Nick mentioned, this V in pin can take anywhere from 7 to 12 volts. We're right up on 12 volts, so we're good. So from your bundle of jumper wires, um, hopefully you've been able to clip all of your zip ties off. Yeah? Okay. So once you have your oh, once you have your jumper cables, grab I'd suggest grabbing the shortest ones. Just so it's uh makes it a little bit cleaner on the redboard. Grab it doesn't matter what color either. Uh, but I would grab maybe a lighter color just to match it with the positive end. Grab a jumper cable and connect it to any of this any of these vertical pins on the right. I would suggest maybe this one right here. So make sure it's connected to the left side on the red rail. Once you have that one connected, grab the other end and connect it to the V in row. You can connect it to any of these pins on the row as they're all connected. So I would probably do this one right here. Connect it as such. So that's power sorted, um, but we need to grab, uh, give it ground as well, since all electrical circuits must have a common ground to operate. So to do that, grab another cable and connect it to the blue um, column, making sure that it's right below the black terminal. And then grab the other end and connect it to any ground. So there I see, uh, I think there are two, two grounds on this board. I would probably do the one right next to VN. So right below VN, connect your ground as such. So now we have power to our Arduino. And to test that we wired it correctly, Go ahead and take your battery off of the charger. Press the little tab on the connector to release it and then pull out. And then make sure your switch is off, plug it into the connector. Make sure that there's no gap here. Make sure red goes to red, black to black. And once that's connected, go ahead and flip your switch. And now you should see a blinking light on your Arduino. These Arduino come with a blink sketch from the factory. It just blinks the LED on and off once a second. I think this one's blank right now. That's why it's not blinking. But if you see a blinking red light, it means you got power. Awesome. But now let's power a more fun LED, one that can change colors. So to do that, um, since our motor driver will be probably somewhere down here, um, we can push the LED all the way up to the top. So you can pick either side, it doesn't matter. You can choose to put your LED on this side or Oops. this side and from the factory these leads are pretty close together so you want to spread them out a little bit so that once connected they all have a place and all the leads have a place in the breadboard like so just like that it's mostly the cathode oh yeah and um also note where the cathode pin, which is the longest lead right here. Note that where that is, I'm going to put mine closest to the top. So in this case, row two. Come on. Sec. In this case, row two is my ground. Yeah. 
And as Nick mentioned earlier, these pins do different colors. So, wrong camera. The pin closest, I guess, the single pin. the single pin next to the cathode pin is the red one. So this up, the one up top, on row one, is your red color. Then the one directly below that, from the cath, uh, yeah, cathode is green on row three, and lastly blue is on row four. So once you have that connected, uh, actually I'm going to move my LED to this side as we need to make room for the resistor. So go ahead and put it on the A column. And then in your bag, you should have a few different sets of resistors. The resistors that we need are the 220 ohm resistors. Now it's a little hard to see, but the coloring on the bands tell you what resistor values, uh, value it is. So we gave you two, uh, two different resistors, one 1K, I'm uh, sorry, a few 1Ks and a few 220Ks. We need a 220, or sorry, not Ks, just 220 ohms. That one will be the one that has uh, brown, brown, black, black, then brown, or maybe red. I think they're, yeah, oh, it's a little faded on here. So here's a reference of what you need. It's also the one that is bundled as a pair of four, I believe. So that might help. Oh, I think some of them are actually, the 1Ks are bundled as four as well. Yeah. What do the 1Ks look like? I can go around. Okay, you can measure. So uh, Nick will go around and measure your resistors just to make sure you have the right one as we really don't want to burn out our LEDs. So I'll leave this here as a reference. So I think the difference between these two resistors is the red and the black, that's unfortunate. It's like literally the exact same, except one of them is red, uh, two of them are red, and the other two are brown. That's the only difference though. Everyone got it? Yeah. Okay, cool. So with your 220s located, um, I would suggest bending the leads sort of like like that so that it can be placed into the breadboard. So put them into this like square shape. And once you have that done, let's connect the red LED first. So again, the rows are connected. So I'm gonna take the 220 ohm and put it on column B, B1. And then put the other one somewhere on the other side. So now we've essentially made uh, this connection on the schematic from the LED to the resistor. And because there's a, there's a gap here, these two sides are isolated. So the current must flow through this resistor. So that's the one for the red LED. Now let's do it for the remaining colors. So grab another resistor from the tape roll. And same procedure, just bend it in a square shape like that. And remember that row two, in my case, is my uh, common cathode, which does not need a resistor. So you can skip that row and skip to the third row. 
and grab the other end and place it in a uh, not on the same row as your red LED resistor. I'll do the one right below it. So now your circuit should look like that. So remember to skip the second row. Uh, I don't. You don't have to skip it on the other side as there's nothing connected there. Just make sure that the two resistors are not on the same row. And lastly, grab your last resistor. Bend them. And connect the blue LED. And now your circuit should look like that. Next thing that we need to do is connect our ground or our common cathode. So connect that to row two. And this ground can go anywhere. Uh, let's put it on this side. On the power rail. On the power rail. Oh, one thing that uh, <clears throat> I need to clarify is that while these two are isolated, their grounds must be tied together. So the positive rails are isolated, but the two grounds will be connected together. We'll connect them later. But this should allow for um, the use of this side as a ground rail as well. So once that's connected, we need to bring five volts to the left rail. So grab another lead, probably a short one, and connect it to the five volt output on the Arduino. That would be the fourth one down from the in. there on row 19 in my case. And then grab the other end and connect it to the left rail. Uh, probably do this one. Mm -hmm. And then we need to link up the grounds together. So this is nice. Let's So I connected the ground to the in my, cathode. In my, yeah, in my case, it's row two. Oh. That'll be the longest lead on your LED. Mm. Yep. And then get that uh, jumper and connect it to the, oh, <laughs> well, to the uh, ground rail. And now we need to link these two rails together. So grab another jumper. And it doesn't matter where you put it. Um, I'll just put them down here. So blue to blue. So now we have a common ground between two buses. That. So as a reminder, this side is your 12 volts coming from your battery pack. And this side is your five volts coming off the Arduino's voltage regulator. This side will be used for uh, the motors and this side will be used for any other logic devices we have connected. And lastly, to make some colors, we can grab one lead, connect it anywhere to the five volt bus and connect them to the other side of the resistors and you should get light. So there's red, there's green, and there's blue. And uh, with, I guess, color theory. Uh, when you mix two colors together, <laughs> you get other colors. So you can grab some more jumpers and mix two colors together. What well, blue and red make purple, right? Yes. And violet? Right. There's violet. Or we can do cyan, cyan blue. with blue and, green. blue and green. So here's blue. Green, now we have cyan. 
and yellow, yellow right? Yeah. Red and red and red and green. Green, yeah. Red, green. There's yellow. Not really. Super yellow. It's, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a little on the greener side. And then one white. And then if we connect all the colors together, we're going to get a white, which in this case is a little on the blue side. More like a aqua. Uh, yeah, because not you know is the current feeding into it's been different. Yeah. So. The reason why it's slightly off is because since Nick mentioned earlier, uh, the different colors require different voltages. Well, we're using the same resistor on all of them, so some get different currents than others. So that's why it's a little bit of a bias towards certain colors. So hopefully everyone was able to light their LEDs. So once you have that done, you can go ahead and remove the jumpers as they will be going onto the Arduino later. You can leave them on if you want, but just remember that we won't be using this circuit set up for the final robot. Yeah, and then as I mentioned uh, before, the instead of uh, routing them to the 5 volt uh, statically, we're going to uh, route them to the zero pin on the Arduino so that we can feed them 5 volt or 0 volt depends on the color that we want this RGB LED to light up too. So, yeah. All right, moving on to the next topic. Um, let's talk about the motor drivers, or as they're technically called, uh, H-bridges. So this is the L293D, which is a two-channel, I believe, two-channel H-bridge, capable of delivering up to 1.2 amps, I think. Uh, we're just on that limit, so these are going to get a little warm, but they should be okay. So this is your, your motor driver. And a little bit of theory on how they work. It's a combination of switches or transistors in a clever way to reverse the output. Because you want your robot to be able to go forwards and backwards, not just one direction. So this little animation uh, created by the Sakuba founder, Gabriel, Contreras, uh, I think this is awesome. It shows how the switches are able to change the flow of current through the motor. So on the right, we have a circuit diagram. I'll draw it out actually in this for a second. Uh, so here we have the motor drive pad, the H bridge. If switch one and switch four, I guess, are closed, then you can see that the current will flow in this path. Because these two switches are open, um, no current flows in that direction. So we can see the current is flowing that way, which will make your motor spin one direction. Now, let me draw it again. Uh, If switches two and three are connected, the current will flow in that direction from high potential to low potential in the other direction. So that's what allows it to go the other way. And this switching is achieved by using transistors and the pins on the H bridge are as follows. So we have, uh, actually, let me use the, the order for this. On your handout that I gave everybody, uh, here is the pinout for the motor driver. Um, I'm not sure why this is here, but it's supposed to point here. That's the notch on your motor driver. It's, it is that notch right there. So that tells you which way is up so that you know what numbers correspond to what pin. So the notch is up top, it's up top here. This is your enable pin. Uh, this is your. This is where you feed in your PWM signal to modulate the speed. Then you have input one, which simply turns the inputs on and off. You have the output, which goes out to the motor. You have grounds, 
uh, these four grounds are linked together, so it doesn't matter which one you use. This is the other output that goes to the motor on this side. Another input to uh, the input one and two are what change direction. So if input one is high or five volts applied to it, uh, I'll do five volts here and zero volts here, it will go in one direction. If you put zero volts here and five volts here, it will go the other direction. And VS, this is very important. Um, a few days ago when we were testing our demo, we accidentally connected the wrong voltage to here and blew up a nano. Uh, so be very careful when connecting this. VS is the motor voltage. This is what you will feed in. This is where you'll feed in the voltage from your battery pack. This is what gets routed through the circuit into the motor. So in this case, uh, oh my gosh, in this diagram, that's VS. That goes directly through the motor. VSS is the uh, input to power the chip itself. The chip needs power because it has some logic in there. So five volts goes to pin 16 or the top right corner and pin eight is where you input 12 volts, the bottom left corner. And on the side, it's the same thing on the side, except um, it's controlling the other side. So you can kind of think of it like, this is the, this, these are the two channels that the motor driver is capable of driving. Each side control one motor. So. Yeah, each side controls one motor. So this is where one motor gets connected and this is where the other motor gets connected. So with the theory aside, let's actually spin some motors. So Nick will walk you through on how to do that. All right. Yes. So now that we have um, our theory ends, let's go over how to uh, run your first motors through it, okay? So for now, I'm just gonna temporarily remove the um, RG, uh, the RGB LED since we don't need them for now because it's a demo for our uh, motor driver. So here uh, is your motor driver with the make sure that your the notch on your the top uh, here uh, facing away from you when you uh, apply it to your circuit and you want it to connect uh, right on top of your um, right on top of your Arduino on your breadboard. So I'm gonna turn off the uh, power supply for now uh, and apply it here. Fairly delicately because the pin bend really easily. Okay. And apply pressure on both sides for them to go in like this. Yes. Okay? Yep. Or away from away. the Arduino. It should be facing mm -hmm. up. up right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for for on, on my circuit, I have the top row of pins of the driver connect to um, row 6 on a breadboard if you want to follow exactly what I do. And uh, the next step uh, is that you want to power the driver uh, of the Arduino uh, using your um, 5 volt logic pin. So as you can see from the schematic, the 5 volt from Arduino or from your power rail on your left side will be powered to the the V um, VCC1 or the top right pin of your motor driver. And uh, because uh, we're controlling the speed of the motor 
through the enable pin by um, supplying the PWM signal. But in this case, we're gonna drive um, the motor at full speed. So we're gonna supply a constant five volt to this pin also. So for the enable uh, two pin on the bottom, you want also supply them uh, at a, uh, a constant five volt. So here on your circuit, uh, you will have your five volt power rail on the left side. So you want to connect it um, to your top uh, right pin, which is your um, the the VCC one would power your motor driver, and on the uh, bottom right pin, you see your enable pin would control the speed. Right now we're trying to uh, driving it a hundred percent, so gonna, we're gonna supply it also a constant five volt. So you're gonna connect it, um, same time five volt power rail from the Arduino to the bottom right pin, right here. So top pins on the right side and the um, bottom right pin for the at the motor driver. Okay. And uh, next, you uh, for every uh, board, you will have a ground. So you can connect the, the ground pins. Um, so the ground pin is basically um, the two middle pins on each side of the driver. So you can connect uh, your ground from the power rail to any of the ground pins that on on the driver. So I'm going to connect the ground from the left power rail here to any of the two uh, middle pins on the driver, right there, okay? I'm just not focusing. Yeah. So there should be um, a pin on each side. So the two middle pin is the ground pin, so it connect uh, that to your ground. Um, and next, in your circuit, you want to power your motors directly from the power supply, which is the battery in this case. So you will connecting your uh, 12 volt from the power rail uh, onto the VCC2 or the VCC on the bottom left side of the driver. So grab your uh, one of the wire and connect it uh, from here to your um, to your uh, bottom left pin, which is the VCC in this case. And if you want to have a look at um, the the pin now, then you can see right here is a VC, VCC two which power the motors. Okay. All right, and then uh, next, um, you want to uh, connect the output of your motor to, uh, sorry, connect your motor to either of the output pins on the driver. So it would be uh, two down from your, uh, from your uh, VCC and then two up from your enable pin. Okay, so the two middle pin so right outside of your ground pin right there so um, you're gonna connect any lead so it doesn't matter the direction for now so just connect um, grab your motor and then connect them to the output pin so it's gonna be right outside of the ground so it'll be one connected right here um, so your two middle ground pins and one on top is the output one and one on down from the ground pin will be your output two okay and make sure they are connected like that in this case okay and just look at your schematic right so the two uh, middle pins again is ground so one on top of that ground is your output one connected to one pin of the motors and uh, one down from the ground would be your um, output two um, connected to um, the second uh, uh, lead of your motors. 
Okay. Okay. And there's one thing uh, that we did not include in our schematic is the two input pins which control the directions of the uh, motors. So we have the pin input four and uh, input three. Uh, we don't have uh, them connected to anything on the schematic because we want to emphasize that. Uh, changing the voltage supply to these pins will change the direction of your motors. Um, so for now, we're going to connect one of them to 5 volt and the, all, the other one to ground. So that will make the motor rotate in one direction. And if you change uh, the voltage supply, so if you supply the top one to zero and uh, the bottom uh, input to 5 volt, then it's going to change in the other direction. So let's do that right now. So now with your um, one of your wires, um, the input uh, pin right below your VCC2 on the right side. Let's connect them to a uh, 5 volt power rail uh, in this case. So here's your VCC pin on top. You're gonna connect your pin uh, one below it. So that's your input um, four in this case. Okay, and then you want to connect them to your um, 5 volt rail. And then um, your other input, um, you want to connect them to um, your ground. So the other input pin would be uh, one pin up from your enable two pins. So on your right side, right here, and you want to connect this to ground. Okay, so now our circuit is complete with your V, uh, with your VSS, or um, this is powering the driver itself, supply from the 5 volt power rail, and your enable 2 is also being supplied by 5 volt power rail. Make sure you check your circuit. And your VS, in this case, is a power, powering the motors. You want to make sure um, the VS is the bottom uh, left pin. You want uh, to connect to the 12 volt power rail because that's supplying the motors and your ground so make sure just one of the ground is connected your to your ground power rail so either of these ground will be okay and your output four and three uh right here should be connected to one uh the two lead of the motors itself right here in the middle so output three and four make sure they're in the correct position and lastly your input um four and three should be connected to um either the 5 volt or the ground and it will change directions now uh, the circuit is complete you can turn on your your uh, battery and it's awesome. I heard one there nice oh <laughs> So you still see your motor rotate in one direction. And then if you now you switch the input three and four output on your driver, you should be able to see it uh, rotate in the other direction. So now if I switch um, the input here, and um, these are the input that I'm feeding into the driver. Now I'm going to switch them, this one to 5 volt and this one to ground. You will see them rotate in the other direction. The inputs, right? Nice. Oh, yeah, that's good. Well, it's maybe you can just retry it. Maybe it's like not a good socket or something. There we go. 
Okay, perfect. And then, that's for still two. Okay, perfect. Can we see the notation? Uh -huh. Like like you have like a piece yeah. of paper. Oh, paper? Yeah, so I can. Uh, I can grab a wheel. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Okay, uh, as you can see, if I have uh, my motors, uh, my input connect to uh, input 3, to um, input 3 to ground, uh, input 3 to um, 5 volt, and input 4 to ground, I saw my motor rotating in one direction. But if now I switch the input from um, the voltage supply to the input, you will see the motor rotate in the other right direction. Okay. All right. Uh, that concludes our hardware number one session. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for showing up today. Um, one thing that we would like to mention today is that since both of us are going to be um, gone by next semester. Well, I'll still be around, but I won't be a project lead anymore. Uh, we would like to find somebody to pass the torch on to. Yes. So if there's anybody here interested in becoming a project lead in the robotics club, please let us know. Um, the earlier the better, so we can get you sort of on board and like Shadow show you how to, yeah, like how we run things. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just let us know. Um, we don't want this project to die next year, so <laughs> yes, it would be awesome if we can do this again next year. So, You can do it by yourself, or if you have a, a partner you want to do it with, uh, that's totally fine too. And But you just need to let us know so that you, like, we can start showing you how we run things, and you can learn from us early on. Yeah, I, I would recommend that, like, minimum two people, because it's been a lot work. doing a lot of this stuff, like logistics and everything, so uh, we recommend at least two. Mm -hmm. And it looks super good on your resume. Uh, it has actually helped both of us both get an internship. Yes. So mm -hmm. it's a really good. Employers love it. <laughs> yeah, they ask us a lot of questions about it. So yes, uh, it's it's a big plus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching.